Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining to the Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director. And before I start uh, talking to our wonderful guests here, um, I wanted to give you some updates. Um, first of all, our Art So Wonderful Art Gallery in University of Mall is going on incredibly well. Uh, we had, um, it's a performing center as well. It's like over 5,000 square feet. And um, come check it out. It's so much beautiful art from artists from around the state of Vermont. And uh, we've had in there for performings, there's a Youth Symphony Orchestra, Jack Hansen Jazz. We had just had a Latin dance there. How incredible was that? It was a lot of people came. Um, and um, Shelvin Vineyards is one of our sponsors. So it was a, you know, they had a good time there. We're giving out raffles. And so um, look at our website, Art So Wonderful, and see what our next upcoming event is. Actually, in August, we're going to have a big uh, comedy show at the Marriott in Burlington. That's going to be incredible in the Harbor Room. You know, it's, it, we do a lot of cool things, and we want individuals, youth and families or any member, to get involved in what we do. You know, we, you know, we, it's, it's, we don't charge you nothing. We just want you to be, uh, help you with your goals and your aspirations in life. So, so here we are here. So we're here with Tom Flanagan, Burlington School District Superintendent. Yeah. And um, what a pleasure, man, to hear you talk about um, your wonderful kids at Burlington High School and um, the school district, you know, and, um, you know, the things that you're working on. Um, so for many, many years, um, oh, God, a lot of years, uh, I've worked with your Burlington students and the principals and uh, superintendents. Mm -hmm. And one thing I normally, or I still normally still do, is work with your students around um, helping them get community service opportunities. Because mm -hmm. I know they need 10 hours each right. year to graduate. Right. And um, so we give them um, student uh, opportunities to work with our programs. Um, a lot of our students from um, our youth board president go to your school, and we have youth advisory boards who make the decisions on our programs, projects, and events. And so I'm very happy to say that um, Burlington High School is our, you know, yeah. we, most of the students from Burlington High School are, are work with us. That's so great. you started, um, <laughs> you, um, you're a superintendent, and so, um, so this is your first year. This is. And so how was that with you when uh, you came into college, right? <laughs> did, what what month did you come in last year? I came in in July. Oh. July of, of this, this past summer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great year. I mean, I think the one thing that, that I was really fortunate about was to be able to have some time last spring mm -hmm. to be able to meet lots and lots of people. Mm -hmm. We were virtual. The world was virtual. Oh, man. So I had the opportunity to get on a million Zoom meetings, oh, man. met with over 50 people from Burlington, wow. and I asked three questions. I asked people, what were the strengths of the district? What were the needed improvements? Mm. And what were those opportunities? You wow. Know? So I learned a lot. I learned a lot. So, so since you said that, what, what do you think, what are, this, what are some of the strength answers? Yeah, the strengths, people told me the strengths that they felt we had in Burlington were the diversity of the, of the community, number one. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody started there. Um, and then they move, and then I heard from lots and lots of people about the strengths of the engagement of the community. That the community was very engaged and wanted to be a part of decision making and a part of, of the school uh, and the way that the schools function. Um, and and then you know there were sort of variety of, of other types of, of strengths that I heard um, from from people, but a lot of a lot of people really gave a shout out to, to the, the, the staff, people who are working in the buildings um, and the commitment of, of our staff. Yeah. And I, I saw that, you know, right off the bat, coming in, in the middle of a pandemic, the, the yeah. world had shut down, we were in a really oh, man. tough, tough place. Have yeah. been, right? It yes. feels like we're just yeah, we're coming, just out, coming of out of it. And um, I'm telling you, uh, um, Tom, those Zoom meetings, I'm, you know, ah, man, I was in a Zoom meeting um, yeah. every month three hours, I have a meeting, uh -huh. and I asked him, please cut it back, you know, so they did right. it two hours, and this last, um, um, couple, well, two weeks ago, we met in person, mm -hmm. so uh, how wonderful was that, because that's the type right. of person I don't like to meet in person, I like to talk yeah. in, the, in your face, or whatever, you know, yeah. but uh, God, those Zoomies, man, they, you know, it's, they, it's they get you down. I can't stand them. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I only ha I have one more one more to do, and I'm gonna do it with a person, um, right. Dr. Jane Morgan, and yeah. um, we're gonna talk about the COVID-19 vaccinations yeah. and um, yeah. all the things she um, talks about on LinkedIn. So, right, right. So I, I'm happy to, to talk with her. Yeah. Um, now, so 
people who look like me, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. at Bronx High School. Now, you know, you guys are you're getting better because I know you believe in our uh, uh, equity and inclusion. Absolutely. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But, okay. you know, and hopefully we get it right, you know what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. um, when I came to Vermont, it was in 1989, it was the whitest state in America. Mm -hmm. And the people who look like me really didn't feel like uh, they were a part of Vermont or part of Burlington yeah. and um, yeah. in a lot of ways, you know. Um, because um, there was nothing really offered to them. There was um, nobody really could understand their language, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they had to, you know, you know, they hired interpreters, you know, but it wasn't right. people who really, you know, it wasn't a lot of people who looked like them who worked with people who looked like me. Right. And so, and so I guess you're, you know, getting it right, you know what I mean? I guess you're gonna, you're gonna get it right, you know, because it's your first year, you're gonna be hand, boots, like you are boots on the ground, mm -hmm. here you are mm -hmm. on our show, and I know you're gonna get, you know, two of your students are right in the audience, where they at? There they go. <laughs> What's their names again? Jo um, Olivier and Jermaine. Jermaine from Bronx Jermaine High School at um, yep. Town Meeting Studio yep. getting some work in. Good, Thank great, you guys great for to being see them. Yes, yeah, good to see them. Second day of summer. Second day of summer. <laughs> so you, you might get extra points because, um, you know, oh, definitely, Tom, definitely. Mr. Flanagan's here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so um, so it's good to, it's good to know that um, you, really, you believe in that, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, like I said, I sit on, uh, I live in Winooski, so I sit right. on a, a Winooski, um, I guess, school district. Um, mm -hmm. Racial in, in um, anti uh, racial um, advisory, you yeah, know, yeah. and they got a lot of different things that they're working on. Yeah. Now, so do you have resource officers in your school? So we we have oh, a, man, I know you did. One we point. did, we did. We uh, right before I got here last summer, there was a big question uh, mm -hmm. about the resource officers and wh whether or not we were going to continue to have resource officers mm -hmm. in our school, and so that that was a big question that came up. Um, with the with the activism that was happening um, yeah. downtown and 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 the advocacy mm -hmm. to think about how we're uh, allocating our resources right towards yeah. students mental health and well-being really listening to our students particularly our students of color around how they feel about having police in the building uh, I was new to the to the community so I, I wasn't sure how mm -hmm. how they were operating in, in the community um, and, and what it, what it looked like in our schools and so one of the things that, that the school board did actually before I got here was, was ask me to commission a study on mm -hmm. our school resource officers and, and what they did, what the memorandum of understanding was and what that all looked like and, and um, to make a recommendation on what we should do moving forward. Okay. So we, we, I asked uh, our director of equity. So one of the things that I did right away when I got here, right before I got here, was created two new offices. So we had a, we had a director of equity and safe and inclusive schools uh, Director Sparks, who um, was was working on a number of important initiatives, and uh, what I did was I asked him to become the director of equity and to report directly to me, and to and I gave him an office. So he has a group of people and a budget who are working oh, for him now. Now Henry Sparks has been a friend of mine of mine for yeah. many many years, and his um, wife. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> Director Sparks put together a, a group, uh, a task force to review our our relationship with the school resource officers and the memorandum of understanding and really understand and kind of look at that. Uh, and that was a community-led process. We had a, we had a parent uh, and a student who were co-chairs. And um, we ended up with a recommendation. It, it took, it was, it was a deep study of, mm -hmm. of where we are. Um, we heard from students, we heard from the community about, about their, their thinking about school resource officers. Uh, we had principals, we had school resource officers, we had students. Uh, you know, community members and families on that task force, mm -hmm. um, and they ended up making a recommendation this spring. And that recommendation said that we would move from having two. We we used to have two school resource officers. That we would move from having two uh, to one. And those two school resource officers used to be uh, stationed in the building, right? right? Uh, and so the recommendation from the task force was that they would no longer be stationed in the actual building. Uh, that they would schedule visits, right, to help schools work through their crisis plan or work through drills that they have to do, some of the mandatory stuff that we have to do to make sure that we're staying safe, that they would continue, uh, that we would continue to do that. Uh, and so that recommendation was made. We have, um, we have to develop a new MOU uh, to really articulate what that will look like moving forward. Uh, but in the meantime, and that's um, a memorandum of understanding with, to who, with who? It's an agreement between the city and the and the school department. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in in the meantime, though, we we actually have uh, one of our school resource officers um, 
is 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 not operating as a school resource officer now, and, and another one uh, was promoted. Uh, so in, so we did we did end the year without having school resource officers mm -hmm. uh, in our buildings, yep. and we have to work on on what the relationship yeah. will look like moving forward. So. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you for, for um, getting those studies yeah. and um, promoting um, Henry Spark, Mr. Mm -hmm. Director Henry Sparks, mm -hmm. and um, working with the resource officers and the community to you know, create um, ideas and to how you're going to um, move forth. Mm -hmm. um, like one thing in a um, municipal, what we're what there uh, in a lot of schools too, other schools too, um, are, are trying to do or doing mm -hmm. having a restorative justice um, in their schools, mm -hmm. as well as. Um, 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 you know, still using resource officers, but they use yeah. um, restorative justice well, yeah. and uh, social social service members. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. social work individuals, yeah. whereas um, students or individuals who are going through some situations mm -hmm. will um, can talk to um, go through a restorative justice panel. If, you know, right. um, to determine. Um, um, what the harm they might have committed to a community or individuals, sure. and how they can make amends to that to those individuals, mm -hmm. or a social service person who can help help them with the, um, in, in, you know, I guess, I guess it's all mental health. We we all Absolutely. got mental health yeah. and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, we all have work, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I'm lay on this couch. Tom, talk to me over here, please, <laughs> man. I need some help. <laughs> but anyway, so so that's a, I think that's a good way. But for me, absolutely, I agree. for me, um, I was born and raised in Chicago, and I was mm -hmm. you know even though I went to a um, well, for a um, year and a half, I went to a um, regular public school, but then um, I went to a private school downtown in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but we had resources, we had police, like in the high school, mm -hmm. right, like in the school. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> the thing about um, that, I, that really, that my, and I don't know some of my uh, advisory members that I sit on in the municipality is going to might agree with this, mm -hmm. you know, because one of the things they want our resource officers to do is like dress down. You know yes. what I mean, and um, don't carry no gun. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, the restorative pieces. I mean, um, disciplinary pieces might go to the restorative justice, Absolutely. and as well as um, so the social service person talk to the individual. Right. You know? um, but for me, I believe you know. I was I work with. I've been working with um, SS Police on a um, national night out, and their okay. resource officer. Yeah. He's he's dressed down. You know what I mean, right. you know, and but you know he carries a sidearm. Yeah. And um, for me. Um, I guess come from Chicago and and, and remembering about Calabine, I really mm -hmm. want somebody in their school with that like a, a resource officer with, with a mm -hmm. gun on it. So I really do personally mm -hmm. because um, I mean you know Calabine, you can't compare nothing or you can compare other school mm -hmm. shootings to that. But mm -hmm. you know one officer may not be able to um, um, you know stop the trouble, but he do know a protocol what the what the drills are if that mm -hmm. happened, and he knew who to call, and he maybe get a couple shots off on somebody who's shooting. Shooting screwed up, you know, and so for me, um, I, I just I, I somehow I just want to keep that part. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I I feel safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. I make me feel better. You know what I mean? That you know, it made me feel better yeah. um, that there's a resource officer in the school yeah. that's um, working with uh, restorative justice and um, social service and then do carry a gun. You know, so. Yeah, I, would, I mean, I would it's, just say that... my the, tiny brain at work. Yeah, you know? <laughs> no, but I think our, our task force sort of landed in, in, a, in a middle place mm -hmm. with their recommendation, right? We had to, we could have said we're going to not have school resource officers. They landed with one uh, who would keep a close relationship mm -hmm. with the district, uh, work closely mm -hmm. with the district, and, um, and continue that, that relationship mm -hmm. and that support. Uh, that they that they provide us, so we see them as a partner. We we definitely want to continue to partner with them, uh, and we've prioritized restorative practices. So I told you last last spring, I, I met with lots and lots of people in in town, and I I asked everybody what the promising opportunities were, and the one thing that really stood out to me was was restorative practices. Yeah. So we're we're committed to restorative practices, yeah. and that's the thing that you know. We we put it's our number one goal uh, is is that our communities are are restorative. Yeah, um, ah, that's that's something. That's, and I'm, I'm proud to say, and I'm 1989. I'm a founding member of the uh, creating a community justice centers around the state, there starting you go. in Burlington. Yeah. So I, you know, I Thank believe you. in the principles, and I believe in um, you know, making amends to the community or individuals mm -hmm. that you um, offend it in, in a restorative way, in circle, in this restorative way. Right. You know, and so that so that's a good. I, I, I believe in that. Yeah. You know, totally. Right. Um. So. You know what, I had an interview with Sean um, 
the hand, McMahon, McMahon, yeah. McMahon and, um, my mentor. So your mentor. Yeah. I'm going to tell him that. Do you know that? We also have some coffee up today coming up. But anyway, to talk to him about, um, uh, <clears throat> he's have a situation where he's built an incredible school. Right. God, is he, he had, uh, I think, three to four year olds into his, and also within the school, there's something on the age group. Right. And when you go past that school now, oh my God, mm -hmm. it's incredible. It's a whole new amenity to, to their building. Right. It's like, it's an incredible addition. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I, I, I said to him, I said, and, and I told you, I said, Tom's going to, now uh -huh. Tom's got to build a whole damn new school. <laughs> so Tom, oh man. You've seen our buildings, beautiful. I love, I love that school. <laughs> I know my, I know my way around that school, man. Yeah, yeah. Bro, you know, and, you know, not as much around the technical school, but I do know, I right. do know my way around. Um, right. And I work, um, I work with Rosa with um, some other things. She, she was the technical school, um, mm -hmm. some, um, mm -hmm. with youth around, um, um, with the DEA and different things about how we can um, be, keep you safe around drugs, drug prevention, mm -hmm. things like that. But anyway, um, I love VHS, man. Mm -hmm. I know my way around that school. Yeah. We, I've had, I have dances in the school. We had youth advisory meetings. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many graduations I, yeah. I went through for you know kids who've been on my youth board. Right, right, man. Right. So you got to tear down the whole damn school and then you got to dig in the ground or something because you got um, some problems with something? Well, What's the problem, Tom? So we, we learned, I got a call maybe five <laughs> or six days before <laughs> school started and said, there's a problem. Wow, man. Yep. Uh, I, we were preparing for COVID, so I was thinking right. there's, a, there's, there's a problem. something with yeah, COVID. Yeah, right? sure. Uh, and it turns out, no, air quality, PCBs. I had never heard of PCBs before. Me either. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Polychlor... So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Some, but it's... It's a chemical. It's a, yeah, oh, that it's a chemical. A, uh, that wow. was used wow. up to the 70s in building materials. Oh, really? Yes. Like, like, um, like the plaster or the bricks? So it was used in... What we, where we found it, it's, it's used in a lot of different materials. It's kind of an, uh, like an oil that's used in some materials. Mm. Um, and where we had it was in the window caulking. Oh, the so windows. around the windows, keep the windows in, there were, there were PCBs in the window caulking. We learned about that, and that's the first place w that we learned that we had those PCBs. And this was all, the reason we learned about it was because we were doing a renovation. Mm -hmm. So when you do a renovation, you have to study yeah, the building, yeah, right? We started sample, studying the building. And all that stuff. Right. They looked for PCBs, and they found them. And so... They found them in the window caulking, and then they kept looking. They found them in the wall. So what happens with the with Rain, PCBs? Different things, they can travel. They can move. Wow! So they spread into the Did, walls. And it went down too, huh? Up and well, down. Well, then we learned that they also can be in in lights oh. and in the light ballasts. Oh, really? In lights. Like in, in, in the lights that were in the built, you know, made oh. in the seventies. Oh, wow! Um, and. And then we most recently learned that, and this was what sort of pushed, it, pushed us over the edge mm -hmm. to make the decision that we're going to have to build a new building. We found that they were in the glue underneath the floor tiles. So the really? glue that stuck the tile to the concrete. Wow. And then, and they have sunk into the concrete. So they're in, they're in the floor. <laughs> well, when I build those build when? How long is it? 1963. 63. Oh, okay. So they're in the walls, they're in the floor, they're in the ceiling. They're in the air. They're, they're in the soil. In the, in the windows. They're everywhere. So we learned about we learned about this problem and 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 that they could be airborne, and back in the mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. And so we did some testing. We wanted to get the testing done as we learned that there was possibility that, that they could have they could be in the yeah, air. Yeah. We wanted to get the testing done before school started. So we got testing back from F building where BTC is in the the back mm -hmm. building. Uh -huh. yeah. And there were some very high numbers there in the thousands. Oh, one really? one room up to 6000. So there oh, were wow. there were some really high and they measure it in nanograms per cubic yeah, meter. Per, per, and per, per cubic meter and it's yeah. probably in uh, square footage probably. Yep. And the the Vermont Department of Health's uh, screening threshold is 15 nanograms per cubic meter. Really? And so we had some classes in the thousands, so we closed we had to close the building because we didn't know what the rest of the tests were going to show, Damn. but we knew the F building was extreme. Wow, high. man. Yeah. Uh, but then we did more testing. We came back and we learned, okay, um, the, the, the Department of Health has a th screening threshold, and so does the Environmental Protection Agency. EPA. So the EPA's was between 500 and 600. So we had, we had some, some in the thousands, and then we had some coming in, some rooms coming in. They test areas, mm -hmm. some rooms coming in in the hundreds. And so we were under the EPA mm -hmm. threshold. So we pulled the EPA, the Department of Health, uh, our experts who are studying this, 
and no one thought it was safe to be to be oh, in the wow. building. Um, wow. So that led us to downtown BHS. <laughs> it took a while to find it, but we learned wow. about a Macy's and off wow. we were. Awesome. One of my good friend Don Sinek's an advisor, you know what I mean, and, and I'm so glad that he had that that location for you guys. And um, and um, and, and now, so how the students are? What are they saying about this building? You know, I was there the first day. I've been there quite a bit, and everyone was wearing masks. So you could, but you could still see the smiles on right, on their sure. faces. Oh, okay, awesome. Well, what we heard from students really loudly was they wanted to be back in school. And so just to be back in school, even if it's a quirky building, right. you know, sure. Sure. they wanted to be back in school. And so students were happy. You know, we, we do have some noise yeah. mitigation, sure. some noise stuff we have to work out. Sure, sure. Um, but it's a nice building and it's built, it's around, built sort of around the escalators. Yeah. And there's a central location. Oh, yeah. The old high school was spread out yeah, all I, I over. Yeah, they love that escalator stuff. Yeah, tomorrow. this is, this, yeah. there's a good community yeah, there. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I, I took a I told you I took a tour through there right, with some right. of my advisors. And I'm like, dang, there what I INC was right there. And then there's a men's, you know, I used to get my shirts. So, like, no. <laughs> so what'd you think? <laughs> I'm like, where's INC? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think that um, you know, I, you know, what I thought was like I, I you know, the like the ceilings, you know, don't go all the way right, up, you know. Right, at right. the time it wasn't no doors. You, right. you put over yeah. set, doors. Over 50 there doors in there. 50, now. So yeah. so um so I think it's you know I think it's it's good you know I mean, it's yeah. a good location you know and so um, um, one thing that I uh, you know I've been working with um, individuals with uh, around youth you know what I do is um, help youth with safety and safe places to be where there's mm -hmm. no drugs snack or tobacco I had to open up youth centers around the state called the Chill Out Center in Loft 89 mm -hmm. and um, living rooms for free at, for all the different around the states and all the malls and right. all around the um, and, you know, pretty much all around the state mm -hmm. and um, and so I know for a fact, you know, um, Burlington helped me help the ones. I had one in the Burlington mall, was that where L.L. Bean was, it was almost 8,000 square feet. Okay. But anyways, I, I, I know for a fact, the um, reason why I did that, because I wanted to get my safe place to be where there's no drugs, snack or tobacco, as well as have a place where they can sit and chill and do their homework and have tutoring right. and computer. Right. And that's what you a safe do. Space. Safe place. Safe what right. you do. And um, be, uh, one of the reasons because, like, they used to hang out down in town, like, it's, right down on Church Street Marketplace and, mm -hmm. you know, some students would call havoc, you know what I mean? They would, right. you know, be sitting there smoking or cussing or, you know, all this, these things, you know. So um, that's one reason why I wanted to give them a place to be. And right. a report from, uh, at the time, Rob, uh, Rob Redmond said that kids don't hang out downtown. They get less, mm -hmm. their police said they get less tickets to smoking. They, you know what I mean? Uh, right. So they had some good, uh, they had good, a place to go. They had a place to go. And so, so now I'm thinking, dang. <laughs> You know, right. these wonderful kids, you know, like when, like when it's summer, you know, are they going to go straight home? Good thing the bus station's right there. Right. Are right. they going to go straight home mm -hmm. or are they going to hang out downtown? or Because I know for, and I've been watching, I've been kind of mm -hmm. just seeing this, just to, for me, just do my own um, um, due diligence. I mean, trying sure. to figure out, um, do we need to, do I need something or more of um, after school programs or, right. Right. or um, you know, um, or something else outside sure. of school? Now, one thing I know about our school program, which is awesome, every school should offer them, mm -hmm. but a lot of kids who we, who I work with, and I'm more of the, some, a lot of them is like economically challenged, live in a high-risk environment, mm -hmm. and um, um, all youth are in high-risk, every mm -hmm. single one of them, and um, um, tend to um, not follow all the rules, you know what I'm saying? And so those are the ones that um, we want in part of um, in a um, safe place. Because, yeah. you know, when you don't see them, you know, you want to know where are they? Where do you where they right. are? You right. know, and then what they're doing? They could be in a bar in the woods, right. having um, unprotected sex or use risky behaviors, or maybe mm -hmm. in somebody's basement or something. Doing. And so, you know, for, for me, I always you know when we have events for youth, we always have over 300. You know, okay. and so I can see 300 kids in the room. At least I know maybe it's still going to be some you know in those places there. that I know they're there. Right. And, and they're safe. And they're safe. So, mm -hmm. so when I don't see no kids, like you know, right. I, it bothers me. Yes. Because um, what are what are what are you and yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Maybe you should ask. Maybe we should maybe um, get Russ or somebody or Bonnie. Yeah. Do a survey. Ask mm -hmm. him what do you do after school. Let's just right. ask him that right. question. Yeah. How I can feel better, but you know. So what after school programs do you have? So one of In the High School. yeah, you know, one of the things that has really held mm -hmm. us together as a community this year has been sports. Mm -hmm. Sports was the one place students could be out, mm -hmm. close together, right? right? running, getting their energy out. 
and being in a in a kind of supportive sure. and productive place. So sports is sports were really important yeah. for us as a community. We, we won the use, state championship soccer the fields, game. Right? We have the fields, you and can, we can you, still use them. Thank God. Yeah, we won the state championship of soccer. Woohoo! Uh, boy soccer. Ball. Lots of lots of really good. Um, you know, lots of sports was, were really important for us. No doubt. And then there's a, there's a lot of after school <laughs> activity happening too. Yeah. Uh, so we do have an after school um, coordinator and after school coordination of activities. I actually was really excited at the end of the year uh, to be a part of the social justice book club. And uh -huh. we read a book um, called Dear Martin, uh, mm -hmm. where, we, where we had really deep conversations mm -hmm. about uh, systemic racism mm -hmm. and how that plays out in our country and, and how that plays out in our city mm -hmm. uh, and, and what what the youth, what students were thinking about that and, and the things that we should do. Um, so that's 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 one example of, a, of an after school club um, that's that's really positive and, and I would encourage mm -hmm. students to, to be a part of that. That's right. Um, yeah, and, and you know, I think after school is, is definitely um, an, a, a great opportunity mm -hmm. for students to connect with peer with peers and also with adults mm -hmm. in places that are not necessarily um, you know with the whole class right so you can build relationships you can do you can do a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. more um, mm -hmm. we're also excited about the summer we've got a lot of summer activities sure, going on no uh, so at, so one of the things that we're that s districts across the state and country are, are getting right now is funds through the recovery um, mm -hmm. through recovery mm -hmm. uh, the American rescue plan and so we get we're getting recovery what the state is calling recovery funds mm -hmm. and they asked us to really think and we wanted to, to think about how we develop summer programs mm -hmm. uh, so we, we have a bunch of really exciting summer programs that we're going to be offering this summer we have a racial justice institute yeah, sure. first ever it's going to be kicking off this this year um autumn bangora um and and director sparks again uh working on that piece we have a bunch of partnerships mm -hmm. with with uh local Partners, right. uh, yeah. Boys and Girls sure. Club, sure. Uh, King Street, you know, all the all all the local partners, the uh, Burlington City Arts mm -hmm. and Flint Theater. Um, so lots of opportunities that are oh, that wow. are available, awesome. and that's going to continue next year with after school yeah. programming. And so yeah. yeah, I think there's I think there's that's, a, a huge great. opportunity. I also think being downtown gives students an opportunity to do other things, right? It it's good for business, oh, right? No doubt about to go up and get coffee or. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. it. Yeah. No, not, not uh, but also the, being the able to things. go to the Flynn to, to do an apprenticeship, right? No or, doubt or, about or it. Use the, no doubt about the it. resources around. Yeah, we've been so. a member for Flynn for many years with our yeah. PAC program. We always we bring we've been bringing students there for I don't know how many years. Yeah. So that's a great uh, that's yeah. great opportunity but, for them. But even more, if you're running programs, you know. Oh no, we run programs all the time. And there you go. We do. Um, man, our, we've done over 700 events in this city. Okay. In this um, state, actually. Yeah. So um, racial justice, that's awesome. What, well, how do you, um, what's, and we talked a little bit about um, um, the saying that you believe in um, equity yeah. and inclusion. What, what did that mean yeah. to you, really? Though? Yeah. You know, how did that work with racial justice? So when I came in, one of the things I heard in all those interviews was a commitment to equity um, and a commitment to engagement and a commitment to what we call, what we're calling deep learning. So experiential learning, project-based learning, you know, learning that has depth to mm -hmm. it, that students can connect to. So we, we in my 100-day plan, and, and my team this year has been really focused on these three priorities of equity, engagement, and deep learning. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is really make decisions that are, that are based in, uh, in, in, in fighting inequities. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things we did right off the bat with, with the way we needed to operate in COVID, we couldn't have all the students, all students in the school at the same time. Mm -hmm. So right. we, had, we had to go A day, B day. Right. Uh -huh. And students alternated. We well, was doing that before, the, before that though, right? For um, COVID, wasn't we doing A day, B day, A C day, day. Well, that was for high school <laughs> where they alternated, but they were in school every day. Oh, right. So in, in elementary and middle school, right. we were only in, students were only in school in the very beginning every other day. So one of the decisions we made as a team that was an, an example of the, of the commitment to equity is making sure that students with IEPs, students who have disabilities, and students who are English learners mm -hmm. were able to go to school four days a week. And that was a decision about resources. Let's make sure that the students who need us the most, uh, all students need to be in school every day, particularly our students who are learning English and who have IEPs. Mm -hmm. um, 
need need more, right? We need to support them more. So we no brought them in it. four days a week. Um, we also set a, a, a series of six goals, and all those goals have an have a have a, a measure to reduce a disparity, to reduce. So the first one is is that our schools are restorative, and the the goal is to reduce suspensions uh, for students of color, and so that's about building restorative practices so that we are not having to suspend. Um, it was a strange year this year because of COVID, mm, so oh, yeah. fewer students in in school, many 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 fewer behaviors that mm -hmm. would lead to suspensions. Sure, sure. Uh, so we'll we'll see next year about our commitment there, but, yeah. but that's one example of of how how we're going to do it. And it's not, it's not doing brand new things. The, the district has been committed to restorative sure, practices. Sure, yeah, yeah, no doubt about this it. This isn't brand new. No, it's not But it's, it's not something new that people want to keep doing. No and, doubt about it. And it, and it works, so. Yeah, it does work. And, um, and, and no, you, you, can, you, you can count, you can, it's so, much, so many bad things that, you know, you know, people can say COVID, it was the worst thing ever. And I think it was the worst thing ever. But I mean, my, you know, my degree, I got to find in psychology. I always got to find out what's good with, with something that seemed to be bad right. or that was bad. Right. I always got to find out what's good about it. And so, um, like, you, and, and, you know, I thought about it, um, Mr. Flanagan, when, when you said that um, you for you know, like working together, they just want to be back in school, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And this one, the uh, relationship, things are a little low risk, you know, now, mm -hmm. they, because I think it got to have to do a lot with COVID, you know what I mean? With people yeah. sitting at home, People understand anything. They look at social media. They heard about Black Lives Matter. They they heard mm -hmm. about um, the, how the world is. They heard all mm -hmm. these people dying. They might have been affected by people in their right. family who was got sick and maybe passed on. Right. And how pitiful is that? But I think uh, if I look at what's good, and, and, you know, you got to find something what's you good about to. it. You, you know what I mean? To. You have to. Yeah. And that uh, is that. I think people have come together. Yes. A lot of people have um, volunteered their time, right. donate money to so to to a lot of things. Right. Understanding the issues more about what's going on with um, certain mm -hmm. things that they might not have looked at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like social, like um, equity, inclusion, or racial justice, or right. um, a lot of things. Like looking at Discovery Channel, and say, wow. I only got rolling green, you know, green mountains, right. you know, what I mean? you know, green grass, you know, what I mean, you know, this, this, yeah. this things that you know, that uh, we got smarter on, you know, mm -hmm. you, you might not want to be in the house, but we've learned so much, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. and I think we, what happened too is like, what it does for me because I'm always doing some of the things I do, and so it's, I, I had a, a calm came over me because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm more like, you know, I'm mostly like I'm running all around, and now saying I'm like. I'm, you know, I'm right. calm, even though I need to, right. I feel like I need to do that thing. I need to contact this person. I need to send this email. I got to do these right. grants. I got, you know, all these things that I'm not. You slowed you know, down. Um, yes, yeah, it calmed me down, you know, because um, people just weren't doing that. First of all, everything right. was at a halt, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. right. Uh, you, can, yeah. you can put that in if you want to, but if right. you want to do some events in the park or you want to have some, you yeah. know, who's going to come, bro? Right. You know what I mean? Who's going to come? Well, here? you think Nobody about can come right now, yeah. you know. In an overscheduled mm -hmm. world, sometimes mm -hmm. it's good to have, have a yeah, break. Sure. Right? So I think I'm. Yeah. So I think we're. So my last thing on that is I think, and you, and you can add to that. Mm -hmm. is add to this if you want. I think that um, people are, you know, more understanding. You know, we see people on the street. You know, they like. You know, they like. You know, they more yeah. like. Hi, how you doing? You know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. People like. You know, throwing up the elbows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Throw, 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 throw <laughs> Wait, the we can we can high five now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I get hugged too, bro. I know. I, 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 know, people, you know. I know. That's my thing. But anyway, <laughs> we'll do that after the interview. Oh, okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. But I'm just, you know, I feel so, you know, here we are. Here we are. We're the but first I, I women. Agree. One more thing. This is a, here's a, yeah. We're the first ones on the, on, on the Tom <laughs> Meany studio. I know. We're in the studio, baby. They've had we're the mix ship. We're, we're back. back, man. We're winners. <laughs> we've always been winners, bro. I'm saying. We're back uh, in. <laughs> he shook his head, yes. Uh, yep. So, yeah, I think. I think it felt, so I'm new here, right? Mm -hmm. But community felt so strong. And I think the community really rallied around our schools mm -hmm. and rallied around the city, it kept us safe. We were, we were a very safe place to be in school in Burlington yeah. this year, and it was scary. Yeah. I give huge props to our teachers no, and not our about staff. It. Oh, man. They... Every day they're coming to work, it's <sighs> scary. You're, you're right there, you know, it's, you're close and in, in, mm -hmm. in, in person. Yeah. And uh, they really, they really rallied our all of our staff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm grateful for them. Sure. I'm grateful for our parents, you know, sticking with us. Um, and students, I there was, wow. you know, I've seen a lot of schools in my in my career. Mm -hmm. I was in D.C. public schools. We had 110 schools. I saw all the schools. Um, I've seen lots and lots of joy in the classroom. 
this year. Students just happy to be together, mm -hmm. happy to be learning, teachers being very positive. Um, I've been really impressed by what's yeah. happening. I know we have work to do. Sure. Uh, to, we have a lot of work to do in a lot of different places, you know, but I think we have a lot of really great mm -hmm. people who are yeah, really yeah. committed. And, and, and I don't know if it has to do with COVID, but the community was strong yeah. and, and really pulled together. I, type T, but it, well, I think it was a time to, you know, like, you know, the, like Michael just a man in the mirror type deal, you yeah. know what I mean? Because how, how, how often did you see the man in the mirror? Right. You weren't rushing with grabbing the coffee, you know, like, <laughs> let, let me look at my teeth and, and it was cut out, you know, go out here. You know, we wasn't like, you know, yeah. like that. We had to, we had to change to stop, you know, let me, let me put that little hair back this way, you know, yeah. kind of looking the man in a little time. A little time. And so, like the initities at um, Burlington High School and even Winooski and some other high school, yeah. wow, when you see those kids together, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, wow. They're from all everywhere around the world. Right. And they hang, they hanging out, the, they all hang out together, man. How wonderful is that? What a huge that asset. That's incredible, you know? man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't say nothing wrong. I mean, that's where it should be. But it, I'm just saying. It is. It, it's, just, it is. it's not the way it's it kinda, is everywhere, though. No, it's just kinda, it, it seems kind of weird, kind of, you know. Yeah. Because I'm from Chicago, you know what I mean? Right. It seems kind of weird to see right. that. And uh, I'm just so happy to see it. I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there like, you know, like melting, man. Just watching. They talk, they laugh, having a great time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Together, no, no? the community is wow. amazing. Yeah, and our students, I've been, I've been really impressed, you know, with our students and, mm -hmm. and the way that they have, that they've come together mm -hmm. and just how positive they've been throughout about. it all. But yeah, we're, we're fortunate to have so many, 40, 48 different languages wow. in our school. I mean, imagine, I'm, you know, how our multilingual students mm -hmm. bring so much wow. yeah. uh, strength, yeah. right, to our yeah. community. Sure. And, and I think that we need to, we need to continue to to make sure that we're supporting our students, no doubt. Our, our families. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have a wonderful group of multilingual liaisons. Uh, I've been fortunate to meet, I, I met with all of our kind of groups of multilingual families mm -hmm. um, and, and in the beginning of the year and heard from mm -hmm. them the things that they wanted, uh, wanted me to know, mm -hmm. wanted me to focus on. Um, and I had the chance to meet with them again at the end of the year. We did sort of a series of five different meetings and, and I've just learned a lot, you know, and I, and I learned that uh, they really want us to challenge their children. They want us to mm -hmm. yeah. engage them, call on them, have high expectations for them. Mm -hmm. That's one of the traps sometimes, yeah. right? As you, as you think about how to support a diverse community, sometimes we have lower expectations yeah. for some students. Well, I'll well, ask you something, because you know, it just came back to me. Uh, how did the students, um, the virtual classes, man, you know, how did, how did they, how did that work? How, what was, how, did they pass, man? I don't know, ask Olivier. <laughs> How the virtual they were, classes they were, work? They were tough. Oh, really hard. Really hard. Really hard. Virtual. Yeah, I know. Cause you got to. Oh, okay, it's three o'clock. I got to tune in. And, and oh God, did I study? You know. Um, you know. My yeah. whole point. You know. So no, yeah, we, I bet they were that was hard. hard. I, I visited some classrooms. You know, mm -hmm. and it, it was really challenging. I think for for everybody, yeah. for students, for staff. Uh, um, you know question of cameras should cameras be on should cameras mm. be off can cameras be on um it's i love that star really six hard. they mute that man i love that so much <laughs> star, six. star six you know or you bring up your own self your own like your profile you know be on for you later it was time, really hard time out you know? we're fortunate to to be out of out yeah. of that now i'm so um, happy so now you didn't say though um and um so are you gotta do you have to tear down the school to rebuild, or you gotta, or you just gonna pick away at it okay, and, and so, shell it out, and or, well, I don't know what you gotta do. We're doing a site assessment right now. So the site assessment is where we look at across the city. That's the first step. Where can we build? We know we can still build on the property at 52 Institute Road, which is where the old BHS is. Right. But we don't know, and, and we we don't know exactly where we can build there, right? Mm -hmm. We could, we we will have to take the building down. Yes. Um, I think it's more likely that we're not building on that same piece of land uh, where the building currently sits. Sure. There are other spaces in front of it um, and other spaces we've looked at in the past down mm -hmm. on the baseball field. Uh, so we don't know exactly yet where, sure. where it would be. But anywhere on that, on that land is a possibility yeah. right now. Sure. And then you and flip then around and you can put a parking lot over there, huh? Right. Where the school is. Right. You, put, you can you switch could. around. You can do right. it in reverse. Right. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, this is about the last last thing here. Um, and you can you can yeah. add anything you want to or say anything before we go. Um, so my own is that your service really incorporated in, um, 
created youth on boards for the city of Burlington. They sit on police commission, planning commission, school mm. boards. And so um, we just um, amended the um, a resolution, you know. We, um, our um, youth board president, um, uh, <clears throat> Veronica Lindstrom, who goes to your school, she's a mm -hmm. sophomore, mm -hmm. and, and I and, and um, Councilor uh, Max Tracy, Brian Pine, um, Zariah Hightower, uh, Karen Paul, um, J Jack Hansen, uh, uh, signed on as sponsors. So it was unanimously um, yeah. approved to do amendments, to add more uh, boards and commissions. Yeah. And so, um, which is awesome, because I believe you should be on boards. And they, no doubt. And that's, that's, that's why they're on my boards, and that's why I, I've been doing this work for getting youth on boards, and it, mm -hmm. there's other cities going to sign on too, mm -hmm. like on South Burlington, you know, when you see. So we got, you know, we got, cause I, we work, I work personally in our organization, work with uh, primarily with Chitty County cities. Sure. So we're going to have youth on boards from all these these Good. places and that they already said, okay, Bruce, um, let's do it. Um, so we just got that um, done. Mm -hmm. It's all finished. Um, they just sent me the resolution. Good. And, Congratulations. Uh, with the mayor and everybody. And, and Lin, Lin, um, <clears throat> Veronica Lindstrom, who's from a student at your right. school. Right, right. Talk to the city council. You know, I didn't. They wanted me to say something. Yeah. I didn't say nothing. And um, she just told me why it was important to be yeah. on youth being on boards. That's and huge. so, so um, what I'm saying to you, um, Superintendent Flanagan, mm -hmm. is that um, we're going to be coming into um, we, um, to the Bronx, We want to come into the Burlington High School mm -hmm. and recruit students to be on youth on these boards. Good. And so we don't have. The, we're working with. Um, Pet from um, Cedar right now, because okay. she's our liaison to the city to d help create application process, um, timeline. What's the, what's the job description for a uh, planning commission? You know, I mean, right. um, you uh, teachers, you know, school board or something. What's right. the what's right. the um, so we got to get all of those um, um, job descriptions, you know, right. and be able to put it down on in a small way on some paper. Right. right. Um, re sit in your school mm -hmm. and recruit you for that's. Part of, I'm always boots on the ground, so it's right. got to be part of that's got to be doing that, making announcements, um, doing some maybe some video or something, right. or coming doing something cool in the school and getting you from boys like having a DJ or something in there Sounds or whatever. Good. And so, I'm, I, I want I want you know, and I can get um Brian and those guys to talk to you about it as well. But I I can um I want you to be a part of this absolutely because um it's very important to have you from boys and making decisions on the programs and projects and events. Mm -hmm. That's them. You know, um, right. creating agenda items, yes. whereas that they can say, well, like if they're on the finance committee, which one of the things we learned was, the, you know, come on, man, you're a youth on the finance committee, and they go over all the things, what they're going to pay out to the city or somebody, right. some contract. So you're like this, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> and you go, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll vote for that, yeah. So it really is, how boring is that? You know, right. the good thing about it is, is that, you know, you can put in your, um, you can uh, apply for a scholarship in college, right. put in your resume. Oh, these wonderful things you've done when you, and, and, and it'll help you grow, you know, right, somewhere right, right. you can get some places for doing it. But it, it's meaningless. It's time wasted. And so now, and all our, and that's what, Len, um, that's Veronica's job with our organization to make sure that, and she's, she's going to be working with, right hand by hand with um, um, CETO, okay. you know, so and CETO okay. and her and, and you, people on the commissions, because they all meet with them and talk about, well, how was your day? What did you right, do? This right. that, you know, so they'll be connected. Connected. And, um, but the, the main thing is that we want youth to come out with agenda items. If they, if you got $200 left in that finance budget, mm -hmm. find out how you can use it. You know, talk to her peers or whoever's on that commission sure. or board and figure out ways how they can use that money yeah. to, um, for their peers. Right. Somehow, you know, education or seminars or just plain on, let's go have some Ben and Jerry's ice cream, you know, right, or whatever, right, you know. Right. So, so now we want them to, like, create, they're going to be more creative right. and have their own agenda items. That's what a youth board, that, they need to make, um, do that for the things yeah. that they sit on. So, yeah. so that's going to be important. So I Good, need let's to, do I need, it. Yes, let's sir. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have two students on our, on our school board now. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, one, one, of, one of the people, people, one of the individuals who led the... <laughs> SRO task force was a student, uh -huh. BHS student. Sure. And um, actually, one uh, cool thing that's happening now down at BHS is the we're working with the Harvard Graduate School of Education, wow. and they are helping us build build lessons that are that are deep learning, right? That show deep learning. And we're actually bringing students in. They may be there now. They're they're in there this afternoon, working with teachers and kind of giving feedback and 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 being a part of the development of the lessons oh, that wow. they're going to get. Um, so yeah, they the students need to be need need to be given the space right 
the opportunity sure. to have leadership in a way that really directly impacts right. their experience. They'll 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 fly and give us the best no information we ever wanted if we just give them the especially, space to do especially it. Especially if when we make a decision about them. You know, exactly. Another thing too, like like um, <laughs> um how important is that? That's so important. That's the key. You know, that is the key, man. I know. Mm -hmm. I learned that years ago because I, I right. created youth on boards in 2000. I had them on my board in 2001. Right. But I, I created, we started doing youth on boards in the city of Burlington in mm -hmm. 2003. It kind of fell off because the youth was bored being on the finance and it would, and really what was it was meaningless for mm -hmm. them really it, mm -hmm. but you get prestige from it for doing it right. you say you can bid on it you know college like that you know sure. what I mean? jobs like that you know all yeah. this stuff we get them but you want to have an impact right that's when right you're on that board. no doubt about it. so yeah. um i am excited about Let's that to me yeah and you okay. know we got a um yeah yeah all so right. I mean, it's all done it's now we're just moving into the process you know okay. and um i don't know what it is but um <laughs> i'm sure um, um veronica and um and um pet Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out through Cito. Good. And uh, you might have ideas. I know yeah. Max Palmer and um, Max Tracy and uh, um, Brian Pine and all those guys and want to be a part of um, when we sit in your school, they want to sit there too and, and talk to youth about I stuff. Love it. I talked to, um, well, Brian, Brian is not a counselor anymore. He's a Cito director. Right, he just right. got a promotion. Right. Thank God. Thank you, Brian, for taking that job. <laughs> <laughs> We're, you're my friend. <laughs> we, we good, baby. <laughs> so um, so I can't, I'm, I'm glad he took that job so they can vote to get another person, but we have enough counselors to do the work right. that he was that he done already. Yeah. Um, but uh, I also told, like, Karen Paul was out there with, Paint Black Lives Matter in the street. She she orchestrated that and, mm. and you know put it all together. Right, and right. she was out there just paint like crazy. Yeah. And then I told her, and I mean I said suggested her that we need city councilors, every single one of them, to be mentors to our youth on boards. Mm. And you know what I mean because I they that. they need to hang out with you. You need to help them with some of the things decisions they're making. They need to talk to you about. I'm on the um, school board. I'm on the um, Proxy Rex advisor. Right. I'm on the police. What do you think? This is some of the issues. That would you? They need to talk to them about um, right. some of the, you know, answer they need to answer. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. maybe they can help them with it. And she was like, "Oh man, she was so happy <laughs> that I said that." And I already told all the ones that sponsored anyway they needed right. to do it. But um, it was so important that there's you, you know, have a person like City Council because for me, it's about building, building of youth into a successful person in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you got to, you work with a city councilor, you work with businesses, you work yeah. with communities, you sit on boards, you yeah. work with the schools, you're doing um, community service opportunity. Yeah. Cause nothing, nothing too with the youth, those um, youth commissioners or board, they have to create uh, community service opportunity. Right. And so, isn't that wonderful working with student, your your yeah. student life, whatever in your in your uh, schools mm -hmm. to get, help these students get their ten hours? Yeah. Oh man. So so we're gonna. So I'll tell yeah. you. You know, I say, you know, because students just come to me, they graduate in May or whatever, June or whatever. Right. Bruce, I need 40 hours to me. I say, when? Right now. <laughs> I want to graduate. I say, are you right. serious? You need, to, you need to spread it out. 40, yeah, you, right. you need 10 hours a year, man. Right, right. And you got, you need, <laughs> so we, I said, okay, you got to be here, for, you got to be here. That's, you messed up, man. So mm -hmm. now you got to, you know. You run, have a lot of work to do. Not a lot of work to do. But, you know, we, you know, we help them, like, shop around our youth centers or yeah. give them some. It's you know some powerful stuff for themselves in the lead in life. Yeah, and so um, it's so important though, right? If we want our students to be civically engaged, no doubt about it. When we when they leave us, we've got to give them opportunities right. when they're with us. Right, right. And, and we don't want them to say, "We're, we're Superintendent Flat, Flanagan, he did this, and he, we're going to scrap every, every scrap everything that right. that um, that he did." We want them to say, "Okay, now I just want to mend to the following." Right, you right. Know? The other thing is when students say they want something. Right when they've put the effort in to research it to come with a recommendation, it's hard to yeah. it's hard to fight that. True. Right? Yeah. There's power there. Well, sir, you got anything to add? Because um, you've been an incredible d guest. Yeah. Tom Flanagan, superintendent of Burlington High School. I mean, the school district. Sorry, right, I right, mean, right, right, right. The school district of Burlington. <laughs> yeah. You got a lot of work. So thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, Bruce. You got, really you got appreciate it. You, want, you want? You got anything you want? I'm gonna, I want my hug right now. Come on. <laughs> thank right. you. All right, sorry, you lost your thing. But all right, thank you for tuning Thanks, in. Everybody. Safe talk to Mark. Straight talk with Mark Joe, and see you next time.